All right, we're in the live room. This is awesome. Uh, at World Music Nashville, and I've got the legendary Dax Pinnock right here, my co-host, my cohort. Hello, hello. And I got Will Herring from Sickard Hollow. Happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I got the legend, the great Jason Herndon. Yeah, dog. Hello. What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be fun. I owe you 20 bucks. Thanks. For what? For that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, what have you been up to, dude? Man. Tell us about what you've been up to. What have I been doing? I got to, let me just preface this. I don't think I've ever talked to anybody about this, about, I grew up kind of close to you. Yeah. But I, you were a legend, like, when I was coming up in Alabama, like, everybody knew the Jason Herndon band. I think that. People came to my show to see like how many songs I would do before I passed out drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you think? No. You were a legend, man. You still are a legend. Oh Lord. Down there. I've learned I've learned a lot of what not to do. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm still honing my skills. So but you're you're writing songs still? I'm writing a bunch of songs. Awesome. I'm working on a new record. I'm going I'm heading to London in January to do a few shows. That's awesome. And so that's that with the publishing company yeah, and that's all that stuff? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. We're going to talk about that in a little bit later because I want these guys to pop in on the songwriting. Me and sure. Jason have done some co-write sessions together. Yeah, man. Interested to hear their take on how they do it and all that stuff. Yeah, I was thinking that earlier. Like, they always had that debate, like, what do you write first and how do you write and all those kinds of yeah. things. I, I always find that pretty interesting. Yeah, everybody does it different. You yeah. Know? There's no there's no secret formula to it. If there would, if there was a secret formula... Everybody there's be doing a thing it that online. No, there's a thing online you can buy, and it just it teaches you how to write songs. <laughs> it's really? Like, yeah, it's like nine it's ninety nine a month. Yeah, oh, it's wow. just it tells you exactly how to do it. It's real easy. Is it like one of those Mad Lib things? <laughs> Are you yes. gotta be kidding me? <laughs> wow. Yes. Yes. Hank, we gotta start writing some songs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got the name, Hank. So. I know. Everyone told me that. Well, cool. And right now you're doing the. Uh, Doing some other stuff? Yeah, I'm uh, traveling a little bit. I'm working. Uh, I know you got. I'm your working for Martin Guitar. Right, right. So I've been traveling around the southeast yeah. with my buddy Jay Meyer, and we're just doing like restring events at different stores. Great dude, stores. by the way. Yeah, a great guy. And we're having a lot of fun, and just like Martin has some new guitar strings, and we are promoting them. Mm -hmm. We're putting, like basically putting on any guitar. So if you walk into the store that I'm at. And you bring your guitar, I restring it for free right in front of you. You know, it takes however long it takes, five, six, seven minutes. Damn, that's good. Um, <laughs> I did a, I did an eight-hour shift uh, at some store in uh, Ciderville, Tennessee. You get a lot of people coming out? 40. I did, I did 40 guitars. Wow. So, I mean, I'm just. I think we do 40 here in a day. It was a lot. Yeah, but I got, to, I got to hear a lot of interesting stories about where they got their Martin from and. I think about 90% of the guitars were Martins in the rest room. But I mean, oh, we, were we they all care. old? Man, I played a 1940s D18 mm. and a couple of D41s. <laughs> people, these people got some incredible guitars. That's amazing. And, and great stories. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. Well, good deal. Speaking of that, we're going to get into strings and picks because I got to ask you guys. One thing I noticed about working here at the store and just being in music retail the last two years, kind of, there's so many different strings, and I don't even know where to begin. So I got to pose this question: You play as what do you what what do you look for in a string? Where do you go, Dax? You're a discerning player. You can electric. I use NYXL or Elixir. And then acoustic, I almost always use Elixir just because I have clammy We're hands. We're going to get in the coded versus non-coded, I already see. If I didn't have clammy hands, I would just use normal strings. Really? But I have very corrosive guitar. I hear that. I do, too. I do yeah. too. I mean, I've, I've used to, when I used to play wrong with all me, the <laughs> time, I would, I would do like a three-set night, yeah. and after the second set, I would change my strings. Wow. Because there's nothing left. And, wow. it, and it's nothing against any brand. Every brand, any brand. Right. I just probably don't eat right or something. Uh -huh. and my pH is terrible. Well, mm. one thing I noticed, like I said, working in the retail part here in the last couple of years, like when I was coming up, I mean, there wasn't that many. St I mean, the, the choices are just like, 
unbelievable now. Yeah, you know, I I don't know. I think chain, like strings is kind of like toilet paper. You know, <laughs> you just kind of use what you've always used. You I know guess. what I mean? Or like paper towel. Like you just. Well, it's I'll, hard to change, is what I'm saying. Like yeah. Once you play that one, and maybe it's what your guitar instructor used, or what somebody that you looked up to, that's what they used. Like I used to boil my strings when they got old because I heard Eddie Van Halen did that. <laughs> like I would do anything that I heard that anyone did. You yeah. know, like you cut the speaker cone so you can sound like Hendrix. You know, yeah. just doing all those things. So I think it's. I think these are urban legends, probably. Yeah, probably. But then, like, I'm just saying, like, once you start on a string, it's it's hard to uh, to change because we, we, me and you, and you, we grew up in an era like there was no coded guitar strings. What what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, I mean. So it's hard for me right. to use coded guitar strings because it just doesn't feel like home. You know what, what I mean? About you? You, I like coded strings, um, and he likes coded mandolin strings. Did it take you a minute to change over? Uh, or was it just the thing you just wanted them to last longer so you just it was worth it well now poly no the it's elixir poly that's too, too much you're a nano guy nano i have no problems with them. right right the nyxl i guess they're more treated than coded. well i will say in the two years i did change electric electric strings to the nyxls and that's because of brian that's a good that. point though the coded versus treated yeah they're two different when do XL just feel like normal strings, right? Because the licks are those those uh, polys. They got fuzzy when they got old. Mm-hmm. Because they, they start were, stripping they off. Coated, yeah. I hear rain. <laughs> I hope it's still rain. <laughs> yeah, not not ice. ice. <laughs> what about mandolin coated strings? You still playing mandolin coated strings? I was trying the XTs for a while, and uh, I was just breaking them, which is not something. What are you playing now? I went back to the uh, the. 13s or the point oh one thirteens for mandolin. The is one it the Diodario coded ones? Mm -hmm. the but you were doing the elixir, right? I was playing the elixirs for a minute on mandolin. I I think we have the eighty twenties here. And then we just ran out of them or something mm -hmm. and just switched. And I just prefer the phosphors to eighty twenties yeah. on everything anyways. So I was mostly using the EXPs and then I was breaking the XTs, which it was a thicker gauge than the EXPs I was using and that was so that was weird. So I'm now I'm back to the uh EXPs and again here's my fingers now like I'm all messed up. I, oh. ha I have to use coded strings. Jeez. And uh, yeah, I've played two shows with the strings that are on it now, and I have a broken one. Nice. How was the gig this weekend? It was good. It was Fantastic. Good. Where'd you guys play? Uh, the Sweetwater Brewery in Atlanta. Oh, cool. That's really cool. It, it was a good gig. Nice. Um, Really cool. That's my favorite beer. So aside from <laughs> playing a show, I just like going there. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, we get, you know, we probably sell strings more than anything. Would you get? Would you guys say that? Definitely. I oh think yeah. So. And would you say there's a particular string that we sell more of than anything? Probably Ernie Ball tens. Really? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I always think elixir. Yeah, we do for sell acoustics, a lot of elixirs. I guess, but that's electric. I don't know. What do you think, Will? I always push the elixirs, and if they don't know what they want, then it's like um, always push the light diadarios or the uh, the bulk ones that we have. But if they don't know what they want, I always go for and should try elixirs. By the way, I think we have a great price for the elixirs because we've had people come in the store and say they can't believe how cheap our elixirs are because there's some stores evidently selling them. Above the twenty dollar range for a set. Oh wow! Yeah, that no cool? way. That's ridiculous. We've had people say that, <laughs> have we not? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I won't name names <laughs> <laughs> right I, now. I've, I've been using those. I've been using the Martin uh, treated ones, and they're definitely growing on me. Well, uh, the Martin Are those Martin the string. Lifespan? Yeah. I so like the Martin them. treated is the lifespan. Uh, what's the yeah. SP then? He don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, there's not one that specifically says SP. I thought there was a... I thought I? we had an SP. They've changed... I might be imagining that. Well, they've changed a lot. They got okay. the flex core SP. They've changed a lot because they have those retro ones that are really cool, too. I what like those. I was going to say, like, for some reason, I have different guitars that I like to put different strings on. Sure. Which is kind of weird. I mean, I don't just put, like, the same string on every single guitar. I have. Yeah. Like, I like those Martin retros. 
for that little guitar you have. That's like that little one. guitar, yeah. or like any kind of little, just mahogany guitar, like yeah. a subtle little guitar. Yeah, th- they work good uh, in recording world. Are those made they're of quiet. Manel? What makes them retro? Oh, they're just nickel, like the they? uh, they're nickel. So they're like the way. So the story is that that I've gotten is that you know back in the day you didn't have those options. Did they uh, not have they bronze, have acoustic, bronze strings? acoustic strings? Acoustic strings, it just you just had strings, and they were those silver strings, and they were on everything, and that's what people play. So it's got a real, and not in a negative way, but they're a little more dull. Sure. And you don't have to like roll off all those highs like when you record. Uh, so they record well. That's what I like to use. So the guitar I record with most, I would put retros on. And then I would go phosphor bronze if so I wanted to. So are those comparable alive. to like Diodario's uh, nickel bronze? You ever tried and those? The brown pack. Mm-hmm. Yes. I would definitely, I would definitely compare those two. Hmm. Never same tried idea, those. same, yeah. same vibe. I've never tried the Martins, but I've tried the nickel bronze Diodario, and I do like those a lot on certain guitars. What about the gauge? Because I've, I've changed in the past two years on gauges. On acoustics, I've been going light. I'm 13. I'm 11. I'm I'm mediums. I love it, man. I can be 11, sometimes a 12. I used to think that would be blasphemy. Well, I went down to nines on electric. I'm kind of up to nine and a halves. But for like 20 years, I played 11 to 49. And then I just uh, went down to nines. Why when you, I started working here. Why do you, well, I was going to add, I'll, the only reason I use 13s is because of how stiff they are. Yeah. It's not that I want bigger strings or I'm trying to be some kind of man, but I like that when I pluck them, they don't, they don't go There's away. There's no give. You know, if you really hit a 11 hard, it goes away. I mean, you can't play it. Yeah. Not that I'm it's trying different. to play as fast as humanly possible, but it gives me more of that feel. You know, like when you capo the guitar, like on the fifth fret, and the strings are real tight? Mm-hmm. And being a mandolin player, you probably like that on guitar, too, because yeah, it, it kind of – I love a tight string that, yeah. that has very little rebound. It just doesn't move when I hit it. That's Mando for sure. Yeah, I was pl- I was playing bass for a while, and then um, I was pl- when I would pick up my guitar, I thought the same thing. I'd hit the string, and it would and like I can't. I like to play that fast metal kind of stuff, so I couldn't <laughs> do that as much because I was playing bass. And um, I started playing thicker strings, um, I think medium elixirs on my electric guitar, and I think that's what I still got on there now. Um, I think those are twelves, uh, I think. Yeah, that's and that's it's pretty big. For an electric guitar. Mm. What do you play on electric, Jason? What gauge? Well, I've, you know, forever I was, I was a G- Gretsch electric 12, Tele 11, Strat 10. But now I'm just doing 10s across the board. Um, what kind of I, picks? I feel like I got nothing. I don't know why I was trying to play 12s and 11s. It's kind of counterintuitive, really. Um, man, I just started using these. Is that a blue chip? Flows. No, it's a flow. Oh. It's a Dunlop flow. Yeah, yeah. The blue one, whatever gauge that is, I can't read that. Uh, it's one. One. Yeah. And then I like the black ones, too. The edges are kind of rounded off. I think that's like a 1.6. But the flow, the shape of the pick, for some reason, makes my strike more accurate. And I, I texted Joey about these picks and said, man, what's the deal with these picks? And he... Without even prompting him, he goes, you can play better with them, can't you? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, like, me too. So, But I've given them to some people, and they're like, it's just a pick. For me personally, it's the best pick I've ever, I've it's ever used. It's endlessly fascinating to me to watch people come in and pick out picks. It's uh-huh. weird. I mean, it's like it's two splitting hairs to really get into, man. But, I mean. I, as a When when you're in the store, you, I know Dax, I, I hate <laughs> dealing with people with the picks. And that's one reason why we put those out there, the displays out there. Where they could just come pick out their own picks. Absolutely. It was maddening. It was just, you would want to go stick your head in a blender. Yeah. But yeah. now I mean, we got them. We got them out as much as So, yeah, for the record, like, yeah, I guess it's good to figure out what you want before you get in the store. Right? Are you using the blue chips? Yeah, I use the I use the blue chips for the Which are like 20 bucks a piece. 35. 35. Wow. Can you tell a difference? Holy moly. I think um, um, if you just pick one up. And you just play with it, and maybe even, maybe you're even an experienced guitar player, and you just pick one up and you use it. I don't think you'll notice a difference right off the bat, but if you play on a, uh, if you use it for a while, and then you go back to a, uh, I guess a .88 Dunlop or anything, something like that, then I think you would definitely notice a difference in the lack of a pick click or whatever you want to call it. I think it takes away from that. 
But uh, oh, you, there's less pick sound with the I blue think, chip. I think there's less pick sound, and I think it rolls off the string a little bit better. So for flat picking, like it's less noisy. That yeah, makes I think that makes sense. I think it's a richer tone. I mean, again, like that's kind of like really splitting hairs, but I think that the pick sounds good. Right. Some somehow, however that works. I think it is. I think it is, a, and it doesn't. Um, it doesn't wear. Right. Um, I would think that if I was using a different pick on my mandolin right now, for how long I've been using that same blue chip, I would think I would definitely have to get a different pick. And I. Do you fine. think that the blue chip material? Is is emulating the tortoise shell? I mean, is that what the deal is? I is that what I think that's what they're the deal going is. for? I believe so. Hmm. Alex, though, in, in Sickard Hollow, he swears by the flows. When he doesn't have oh, his blue it. chip, he's the flow is the one to go to. Yeah, it's a good pick. I don't know if I have a certain pick yet. I've been playing V picks. Oh, the the uh, uh plex they're made out of plexiglass, literally, right? I don't. Is that what they're made out of? Vinny's told me the He's whole story. Something like that, I yeah. I just like them. And I mean, I it's like a Vinny. special it's kind, yeah. I think it's a water-based polymer. Yeah, that's right. It's is something that right? like that. It's not just as simple as... <laughs> like right. so you can't get a Lowe's. It's and you a get polymer you with a techno something something another in it. Which it's one fine. do you like, Chris? Uh, the traditional light. I use the 1980. I yeah. like that one, too. I just like, I mean, the uh, other reason I'll be using them because Vinny gave me a bag for free. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Which is a lot. Those things are four bucks a piece. That's so a hell of an endorsement. probably like got $50 worth of picks in there. But I love I love Vinny and I like the V-Picks. So. We're doing a lot of store promotion in this Isn't podcast. Isn't he making some guitars out of the same material? Or is that? Uh, I don't know. I think he made a guitar Maybe. body out of that material. Sure. He does really that's good with that thing, man, and it's it's a cool story. He's just a cool dude. Yeah, that's cool. I like Once that. I got used to a 1980 and started playing with it, it's I don't. It's crazy. It does make a difference. It does. Yeah, it. I like. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think the uh, material kind of feels like the the back of a CD, like a, yeah, like a shiny part of a CD. It beca- if it gets hot, you can feel it grip. You can feel the grip better. Right. The more you use it, it's weird. Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's just plexiglass. I always wonder with. Sh- always wonder with strings and picks and accessories, if you will. Like, how much of it do you guys think is the, is the mojo of it? It's. I mean, that's a, it, the just golly. it creeps in your mind and it makes you want to play. If it makes you want to play more, then it's good. I don't care if it's, the worst thing in the world. You know what I mean. At like, the same if it time, makes you practice and play. I think good. it all matters and none of it matters. <laughs> yes, somehow, exactly. at the same time, it's an enigma. <laughs> exactly. You can think too hard about it. Right. Absolutely. Well, yeah, that's a, we're doing some good store promotion tonight. All right, co-writing in town. You've been doing it for a while. For a while. I, I, I'm hey, on what's that mean? I'm an on and off kind of guy with the co-write. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You guys probably feel me on that. How long have you been doing the Nashville thing, Jason? Like, um, it's about twelve years, including like the co-writes and the shows and. Yeah, you know, it took me a little. While. Well, I started co-write when I first moved here, and and honestly, just I didn't get it. Did you hate it at first? I didn't get it. Uh, it, it didn't feel right to me. Um, it's weird. That's not, yeah, it's weird. Uh, I what, hated it. Yeah, it wasn't what I was trying to do. And then I realized I went into enough meetings and with so many publishers and, and labels that would they ask you, you know, are you are you a songwriter or are you an artist? And I always thought that was the weirdest you question. You can't be both. <laughs> like, what do you mean I'm both? And well, they're like, yeah. How do you think you? Nashville defines that, a songwriter and an artist? Yeah, yeah. I think it means something different outside of Nashville. But what do you think Nashville means by artist versus well i think songwriter. if you want to be i mean and i mean i don't mean this in a negative way i just mean if if you want to be the best artist you can be and hone your skills as an artist a vocalist as a guitarist don't be uh, a songwriter well get your songs from people that are just trying to be songwriters you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you be an artist and and, and you're gonna and you're gonna do these songs because these are the best songs available now not to say some artists are going to be able to write some of those songs to group into being the best songs available but it's a business yeah. And this label is putting all this money in you, and they want you to do songs that they believe in, and they might not be yours. And I think that's when you're an artist. And you, when you're a songwriter, you're the one providing the songs to give to the person that's going to sing it the best, that's going to represent it the best. Is this do level good? 
Do you think that's defining artist and songwriter in more of a Nashville way, though, than... Cause I Absolutely. think if you're at home, you know, growing up in BFE, listening to rock and roll and artists would be like David Bowie, Led Zeppelin, right. you know, Metallica, that kind of thing. That's a way different thing than how Nashville, I think Nashville views the artist as like the face of the product. Is it getting yeah. better though? Is there, I, I hear I mean, rumblings of more people writing their own songs. Well, some people are, I don't know if winning is the right term, but let's say if we were to take a Chris Stapleton, uh, it's it's just undeniable a guy like that he's writing the best songs and he's singing them better than anyone else could so how could he not be doing great right you know what i mean he he happens to possess he's really great at both things mm. um so people like that get to get to do both things but i mean for how long was he doing songs he was a writer. Yeah, I mean, family. he's written a bunch. I mean, he's got, I think, Dirk Bentley and Luke Bryan. And he's got all these cuts with all these Leatherface. mainstream country artists yeah. until the, when he just finally you know, raises to the top. And it's like, you know, he was ready. You know what I mean? Which he, I think he'd been ready forever. But hmm. I think you have to have the interest and want to do that, too. I mean, that's that's a... I think that's a big responsibility to take on to be an artist. And, and it, the way I think about it, just in, in the most simple form, is like <laughs> all of a sudden one day you have to decide, you know what, I'm not going to go buy – I can't go buy my own groceries anymore. Yeah. I, can't, I can't go anywhere. It's true. Like, well, I mean, he can, and he does. He's, he's coming here. Yeah, he's been here to buy stuff before. But I like, you know, I don't know. I think they're, they're two very different things. Yeah. If you're able to do both in Nashville, then you're you're doing really good. Uh, did you grow up a country guy? Did you want to be a country songwriter when you were a kid? Not really. I mean, like I grew up on. I was raised Meta. by my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised by my grandparents, and I was it was all country, man. There was this radio station when I was a kid called WJRD, I think is what it's called, and it, they just played like '60s and '70s country. And uh, and I remember. My sister had bought, uh, I guess, Kiss Destroyer came out in 77. Awesome word. <laughs> so I heard Detroit Rock City, and then it was over. It was no <laughs> more country for me. For a while. And I was going to tell you, that kind of ties into the story. Uh, Bob Ezrin is the guy that kind of, you asked the question about artist, songwriter, kind of thing. Bob was really honest. He, I, I played him some of my songs, and he, he listened to him and said, man, you're good. I mean, you're talented. He goes, but the... This record, your friends and your family are going to buy this record. It's it's like good like that. He's right. like, you got to be good like. Where did you where meet Bob Ezra? At his ha at his studio. Was that in Nashville? Yeah, he has this, he had a place over in Berry Hill. Oh, that's cool. So no he was honest enough with me. He's like, you know, Bob Ezra who produced the Wall. Yeah. <laughs> Amongst other things. Yeah, he let me play that bass. Oh, that's cool. Wow. I was working on some guitars for him in his studio, and he was talking to me about music, and I gave him, and he, he listened to it, and he was he was just real honest. He just, uh, he said, you've got to write something and deliver something, and he was very, like, you he was like, and you can do this. Someone that doesn't know you, someone that has no idea who you are, what you look like, nothing, is just walking down the street and hears your song and stops and listens to it. Can you write that? That's what you got to write, you know? Hmm. So I thought it was cool. I mean, the, the guy even listened to me to my stuff yeah that's yeah, really nice but it's hard yeah. but you've been writing with other people too i mean you oh you, yeah you've well, been i've really gotten into that so the only i guess my, what i'll say about that and then i'll be quiet is just i've noticed that like when i write with other people and the more people you add to it the kind of the the more generalized that the song gets and i think it makes it reach more people and i understand that okay. you know it gets yeah. you out of your I own head and you just don't have to you know I can see that. I don't know. I mean, it's like if we were sitting here talking, and all I ever did was tell you about how my heart was broken, and da da da. And he's like, "Oh, we gotta talk to Jason again. He's gonna tell us the same old story." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Jesus. if we were people, don't want to hear all that. So, right. if the four of us decide we're gonna write a song together, we can be a little bit more general and go, "Well, let's don't do that." And it also makes me kind of hold back and not give that much of myself because i don't yeah. want to go man you don't go too personal i don't go it. too personal yeah. with you and then the I song get doesn't get too personal and you know there's a time and place for those songs i love those songs by the way Same. i hey, live for sad everything depressing, I write terribly miserable so cringy songs. Mm. Right. so angsty teen cheers to that so the way to get <laughs> the way for me to get away from that it, even if i don't want to is to co-write it helps yeah. 
I have like one quick little aside question of the songwriting thing. Because you're a real amazing guitar player too, so that had to have been oh, thanks, a part man. of your early years is doing the guitar stuff. Yeah. Do you find being such a great guitar player is a burden to wanting to be a songwriter? Does it get in the way? Do they conflict with each other? Yes. Because it's like another box you got to check. Because you got part of you that wants to shred, <laughs> and then another part that wants well, to write a great song. I mean, when song. I was younger, I would write songs around a cool guitar riff. Sure. That's it's riff what, and people based. still do that, you know, but I think that's the way you kind of write rock. But sure. I, would, I would try to do other things, like tune the guitar to something that I don't know all the – just tune it to something. Yeah, something drawn where you don't really know all the finger fingerings for it, so you just have to play really simple, and it keeps you honest and gets you kind of more to like. If you just write on a ukulele or a piano, I'm not a very good piano player, but if I just write on piano, I stay real honest with what's in my head instead of letting my muscle memory and everything take me where it wants to take me on guitar. If that makes sure. sense. Like I like you, I like writing in dad gad because it's just one, two, three, four. It's just you just got the chords and that's yeah. it i'm just fretting the top two strings you know and it ke keeps me from uh from getting too into the guitar riff now that being said i've been doing that for like five or six years and now i'm back to the guitar riff like I, now i'm writing songs around guitar riffs again <laughs> because i'm writing songs by myself for myself just for uh for your record for my record yeah well that's cool what about you? Have you had do you do you do you even do co writes? Have you written any songs with other people? Yeah, when I first moved to town I had a development deal and then, you know, people start kinda reaching out if you have even like the smallest bit of traction. Yeah, it's yeah. kinda surprising, like usually kind of bottom feeder type. Sure. But I did some <laughs> co writes on Music <laughs> Row at uh, at some of the publishers and things down there, and I just did not like it. It's a weird. It just deal. felt gross. Yeah, it's, it's weird. like you're ruining everything. So you're just killing the music. Yeah. So I have done some co writes though, but I like it better when it's. I like to have like seventy five percent of the song done, mm -hmm. and then with the producer recording it give him a little room to get some skin in the game. Yeah, and just say, hey, bring you it need to, to do this. It'd be cool if you added that. I do you that. have a song that you co-wrote that you love, though? Do you have one that like, kind of stands out to you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Probably my best songs are probably co-writes. Mine, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, oh, the more people, the merrier. So you guys wouldn't down co-writing in any Heck way? No, it's just, it's just a big part of yourself to give away. Yeah. It, but it's very smart to do. Yeah. I mean, that's why they and want everyone to do you it. You have to it do it in Nashville, better. right? I mean, yeah. you pretty much have to. Yeah, I think so. I mean, well, if you don't do that, you're going to have to share the credit with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it challenges you. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing, too, just from a business standpoint, if, if all three of us are selling the same product, all four of us, there's four of us, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're selling the same thing. Hank, you know, we, can, we can reach further. Hank, five of us, we can reach further. Yeah. So let's say we, the five of us have written a killer song together. Well, I've got these people that I can give it to, and you've got your people, and you've got your people. Maybe your band can cover it. Maybe you can, you know. I mean, it, it's from just, a business yeah, standpoint, it makes it. a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. If we're all just holding on to our all, one little egg, and we're all protecting it, and we're all kind of even competing with one another, we're, yeah. we're not really helping each other out at all or ourselves. That's from true. a business standpoint. Now, not from an emotional or artistic standpoint. That's a whole different thing that makes no sense whatsoever. We don't do things that make sense when it comes to of course. the art. Yeah, yeah, we're all our own worst enemies. That's why I have like three separate piles, man. Songs that I've written that I can do absolutely nothing with. Songs that I've written for myself, by myself, and co-writes. You know, the three piles. I think with co-writes, with, with what you're saying... It, it's awesome with the business opportunity that goes along with it because you can network and market to different crowds that way. People you don't know are going <coughs> to hear your stuff. But then, like, just for, like, the vibe of being an entertainer and musician or artist, songwriter, whatever, ego is, like, n nobody, especially other musicians, nobody likes ego. And I, I might be speaking personally. Like, if I write a song and I'm like, this is exactly right, it's exactly what has to be played, and then I bring it to the band and they're like, well... Yeah. There, there's this and this and we could do this and you change this word and it uh i think it's humbling because it's like okay I, maybe i maybe the writer didn't have all the answers and like it's it's bigger than just that and i think that plays a part in the music when it's being played live Absolutely. or when you're recording it as well you got when you present and this is based on my experience and you guys would probably could chime in on this but like if you're bringing a song to other musicians it's gonna like 
it's going to morph or something. There's, even if they don't even try. If you lay it out here on the table, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Me something. and you have done it. Remember Absolutely. the song that we wrote together yeah. or two or whatever? The one of them I remember vividly. Like, And I, I tell this to people that I play with and, and write with, like, especially play with, and that's a different thing. But mm -hmm. like, I like for people to, when I'm collaborating, like, do what you do. Yeah, just like, I don't want to go, hey, Will, wouldn't it be cool if you didn't do that and you did what I want you to do? Yes. So you got to you gotta leave you gotta that in the car. You got to be open. Yeah, you, you can't be bring open that to with it. you. You got to you gotta be willing to give away what you're going to give away, you know, that Absolutely. part of you. And you got to let the other guy enjoy it, too. It's not, it's like I tell yeah. my seven-year-old. It's called like, collaborating. It's, <laughs> it's not fun unless everyone's having fun. Well, you got to yes. learn the ones that you're just going to be too precious about and don't even throw it out. Don't there. even throw it don't out. Don't even throw Nashville, that out as soon as you throw it out, it's everyone's. Yeah, there might be somebody you've never met that's going to get a credit <laughs> on <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I mean, I've rewritten, I've taken, I brought a song, a 75 percenter to a, to a co-write before and, and get it just completely rewritten and I'm just going, and nothing against the co-writer, but I, I think I'm mad at myself. Like, why did I do that? Like, I, was I trying to eat my ego? Was I trying to get them to just say, hey, this is great. You don't need my help. What was I doing? Why was yeah. I bringing that? Right? Did you kind of like, sense. even even quietly, did you kind of reclaim it and then go <laughs> like record it how you actually well, wanted yeah, it? I mean, I have wondered, like, if I write a song and then we collaborate on it and I don't like what we did, can I just take it back to the way it was to begin with and it be mine again? And the answer is yes, but... It's like, <laughs> it's just, it's funny. I, I've done it a few times, you know. Wow. Do you write songs and bring them to the band and they're just like? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll write songs, I bring them to the band, and um, most of the time the words are more or less set in stone. But it's, it's just the arrangements. It's the and stuff, arrangements yeah. and the jams and the, and the parts. That, and the, uh, the hardest part about writing it for the band, if you're asking, yeah. is... Um, when we do the parts that w were the planned unplanned parts. So when we go into a part, like, all right, so at this point it's for lack of a better word, type two. Yeah. Um, how long are we doing that for? What's the cue to go back into the progression? Uh huh. Which most of the time is either hitting the main riff again, or s sometimes just eye contact. Uh, yeah. We have a few songs right now where we feel like we have the structured parts down as far as like the intro choruses, uh, ver intro verse chorus simple solo sections but when it hits the part where it's all right we're gonna space it out we, we uh we'll get lost and then we'll shelf the song and say it's not done right and you're you gotta think remember will's in a bluegrass band well, too and you guys are like you guys are jamming they're too. rocking yeah. it's out, a bluegrass yeah. jam band yes yeah which is awesome that is all awesome. fun <laughs> it's a lot of fun that's cool man but would you if if let me just ask you this like if you got a hold to a producer or someone got a hold of you guys and said look you know you guys are a bluegrass jam band and when you go out and you play and you do this tour you can play songs as long as you want to but I want to put a song on the radio and I want it to be three minutes how do you feel about that I'm down with that yeah absolutely that's good. you're smart absolutely we we have a song now that um a guy wrote for us in Mobile our banjo player's brother and we're having this. Uh, I don't know if it's a conflict, but we're having a conversation about it. Where I, it's like a three and a half minute song. It's like a radio song, and it's uh, it's called Winds of Change, and the hook is "Sweet Home Alabama, I Really Hate to Go." It's a really catchy song. Just one, four, five are, are the only chords in it in G, hmm. and I'm I am completely on the side if like this dude wrote this song for us. It's a hit. I think it's a hit. I don't know. The band is kind of. I don't know. We're not really sure what we're going to do with it yet, but I'm very much on the side of radio-friendly songs. That's good. Yeah. Pay the bills. Pay the bills. Yeah, sometimes they're just good songs Anchor to be goods. short. Yeah, totally, man. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that leads me into this topic we were talking about earlier today. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The oh. guilty pleasure? Oh, guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Did I talk about this with you, Hank? Yeah. Now is that wrapped in? Is it guilty pleasure? Well, I was gonna try to segue from in the, from <laughs> like co-writing, like writing songs with other people. Like you might not. You well, know, can I say this to start it? Like my f and this isn't a crappy song, but like my favorite song, like when it comes on, is like I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Johnny Nash. It's a kind of a cheesy song. It's a yeah, Muscle Shoals song. That's a great song. It's a killer song, but I love that song. Like, I, but what I, what I was getting at was like we were talking about co-writing and you know how we say so you, you bring songs to a group of people or whatever, and like I guess 
the songs become these generalized radio friendly songs and like me personally I, I not I don't really care about that but there are some songs like that that I do love and there's like what what thing I'm trying to think of one a song I was going to say an artist Creed No <laughs> Jesus Three Doors Down Uh <laughs> a song that like everybody l- that you this is a song that like an earworm song earworm song yeah that's what I'm talking about Uptown Funk who cannot like a but song? it's sick. I mean, that whole riff is sick. It's yeah. so good. Like I don't know that song. You know, Bruno. Yeah, yeah. Mars. I, don't I like probably that song. do know, and I just didn't you know, know that was Bruno the song. Mars. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Bruno Mars. And then that uh, there's a couple of t- uh, Timberlake songs that are that are like that too. But I don't well, put those songs down. Those are great songs. I mean, like I wouldn't be embarrassed to say I like Justin Timberlake. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be. I would. Jason told me his favorite songwriter was George Michael. I love George Michael. <laughs> 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 I love George Michael, man. He was good. I mean, you talking about writing catchy songs right. and sexy songs. He can sing too, man. He's a great singer. He's a cool dude too. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have not. no basis for that. <laughs> <laughs> he's not alive anymore. I know that. I know that. So next, next no. person. <laughs> get, I've but given. I still got to think of my song. I should have co-wrote my answer because I got a little yeah. too deep right there. <laughs> The Space Cowboy by Steve Miller. <laughs> <laughs> it's called The Joker. The Joker. Yeah. Right? Is that a guilty pleasure? I guess I need to be more current. That's a very I like. I think these are more. Were good, you in a fraternity? These are good taste songs. It's a very fraternity <laughs> type song. Yeah. What? Joker. Yeah. yeah I mean, can we just name all that's the ones that we played it, like on the strip? I'm at trying Alabama. to think of a more current song though. A guilty oh. pleasure current song. Hmm. Man, I don't. There's been some, I've heard some tunes from some of the student bands, and I'm like, oh, I, I kind of like that, but I couldn't tell you the name of it. Like Old Town Road. No, I do know that. I don't like that song. Okay, <laughs> that's the only new song I know, and it's like a year old now. Does it have to be current, or is, it, is there any? Well, see, just the other day on the podcast, remember we went down the top ten. Yeah, I didn't know. One of the one of the tunes. What would you be embarrassed if one of us walked in the store? That's what I was getting. You to. were in here like rocking out one morning, doing my pelvic thrust to yeah. the, the beat of some certain song. <laughs> uh, mm, I don't know. That's a great question. Who who are some? Um, not to no no no. You t- talk. I'm still thinking. <laughs> who are some of those bands on the top ten? Oh, yeah, the Spotify. I don't know if I know any of those. Pull up Spotify top ten. This was the global top fifty. See, global might muff some stuff up, though. That could be, yeah, that could make it. Because international, man, man, Latin America. But these would be the, the biggest Asian. songs in the in the world right now. Hmm. All right. I just don't know if we, uh, go ahead. Anyway. China Sorry. would win that, right? Do you want Chinese song titles artists? or artists? Artist. Do the artists, yeah. Because I would never know any of the titles. Right. I, don't I don't even know the si- titles to Jason's songs. <laughs> <laughs> the number one uh, artist in the world right now, Tones and I. No idea. Mm, no clue. Maroon 5, number two. No, then. Maroon 5? That's probably, that's a guilty pleasure song for me. I like some of their songs. Yeah, I songs like Songs about Jane. Yeah. Fire Who? All over. Songs about Jane. Yeah, their debut. That whole album. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Selena Gomez. Post Malone. I like Post Malone quite yeah. a bit. Post yeah. Malone's good stuff. Okay. Sean Mendez and Camilla Cabello. Oh, I've heard of all those people. I haven't heard Except of that. Except for that first one, Tone and I or whatever. Dua Lipa. Heard of her. Nope. Arizona Zervis. Sounds like a rental car company. <laughs> Louis Capaldi. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Capaldi. Never heard Never of him. Never heard of him. Travis Scott. Heard of that. Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. Black Bear, sure. never heard of. They're they're pretty cool. That's a cool name. I like that. Is that hip hop? Uh, Black it's, Bear. I think it's kind of some like indie, rock hip hop thing. Regard. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, that's the top top ten. Well, that's not too terrible. I guess it was different last week. I mean, now deeper into it, it you've probably never heard of anyone. Right. But huh. I don't know if I could tell you one Selena Gomez song. It's funny. I was thinking about that. The, earlier today like we know who she is yeah and we know who a bunch of people are that are artists but i couldn't tell you one song but it, when i hear that it just speaks to me to the demographic that's streaming music is just it's all kids well it's i think it's reversed and too like people used absolutely. to be famous because they were good 
and and now people become famous, famous, famous because they're real good at marketing and not saying none of them they all deserve it i mean we obviously know how hard it is to be on that top 50 list but there's more to it than just the tunes yeah. the tunes who's your guilty pleasure will and Katy Perry put out an album. She's got some songs in high school. It had like Teenage Dream and California Girls. That's pretty catchy. Man, stuff. I love all that. <laughs> <laughs> if she awesome. looked like Steve Urkel, would you still love it? <laughs> if she looked like Steve Urkel, yeah. Man, she can wear whatever she wants. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Looks like somebody shot her in the back with two missiles. <laughs> That's why I like her. Now. <laughs> That's a good one though. She has my buddy Rennie says that. He's like, Man, she's a great songwriter. I didn't know she yeah, wrote she's it. writing that stuff, yeah. Right on. Yeah, I, they're catchy. Earworms, that's a good word. Little earworms. Those little catchy songs that get It kinda in freaks your me out though when I think about it. it Earwitch. What about Dax? you? Dax. <coughs> if I were gonna I think Will probably had the best pick for a true Katie guilty Perry. pleasure so in that it's line, hard not to like that music. i would go with like miley cyrus i was just comparable. thinking miley cyrus. she has a lot of great songs uh-huh. well, that she's might be. a super talented person for sure she's a rock star yeah i mean she could do it all man wow yeah. what about her dad <laughs> What about hey, that? If this podcast was 25 years ago, he would be the guilty pleasure. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Achy, breaky heart. <laughs> oh, wow. Lord. He's I'll never all. forget that summer that that song was popping. I was working in Yellowstone National Park. What year was 92. it? 92. 92. Hey, I'm uh, old. That song made me feel weird then. Now, I was working out now. in the park. And this is There was no TV in the park and no radio. Nothing. And uh, so, you know, it's a bunch of college kids, you know, working in the park. And we, we, uh, we would get the USA Today, and we would look on the, you know, we'd look on the, like, the back of it to have, like, the top ten songs. Like, who was this Billy Ray Cyrus guy? Which was weird because it was a country guy, and it was all, like, pop songs. And lo, lo and behold, when I got out of the park, I saw what was up. I was like, oh, my God. It's crazy. What is the world coming to? There's a lot of stories about him, about him being a dancer and all that stuff. <laughs> he's a Chippendales dancer. and He's a good-looking man. <laughs> and that music video for Old Town Road is something else. I have not seen it. It's, it's something else. I haven't seen that one. All right, here's another question I had. All right, you're, I want to start with you, Jason. Super successful artist or band that you just do not understand, you don't get it. I mean, they. I'm talking like mega, uh, like iconic, iconic, legendary, legendary artist or band that you're just like, I just don't get it. I don't. Uh, I mean, I've got one. Uh, if I'm in a safe place, y'all don't be mad at me. Yeah, go for it, man. Rush. Oh, I can't oh, do it. Heart just exploded. I can't do it, really? man. Oh my goodness. Oh. What, what about it? Do you not like everything? Wow. wow. I'm shocked at that answer, Jason Herndon. Ah, uh, that's a good. You one. play that riff all the time. I, I know it's just. <laughs> it's, you know when you when you hate something, you need to face it just dead you just on. Just confront head your. On. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Man. <laughs> wow, uh, that was a I great. I mean, answer. I don't want to rip Woo! Rush apart because they're incredibly talented. But there's things wow. that I listen to and I can't. Like if that guy was my drummer, I would be like, dude. <laughs> go away <laughs> get out of here i mean i remember when i was like in my 20s like if you, i was auditioning bass players for my band and the guy walked in with a pedal board and i, I was like nah <laughs> bass players don't use pedal boards which now i understand that they do and i was uh, you know i was a jerk you know but i still couldn't ever find a soft place in my heart for rush too talk? much drums too much what math you don't like getting i did not uh, like the voice. bass tone his bass tone was terrible only second to his voice i'm sorry Begin is he talented incredibly could voice. i ever do any of that no do i want to do any of that man i am no. shocked at that answer yeah wow. are you saying you, you did you don't like his bass tone i don't i don't oh, care man. for it okay it's <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all so busy. I like That's his bass. That Fender Geddy Lee signature jazz bass is one of my favorite basses of all time. I have as long bass. as he's not playing. Do you it. like Alex Lifeson as a guitar player? Not right. Guitar not really. player. Wow. Oh, no. you're That's killing me, dude. No. That's I don't think answer. my answer is going to garner that reaction from this crew. I'm though. sorry. I mean, That's I, a, wow. I've always wow. felt that way. I, I, I kind of wish. I kind of feel bad for it, but 
It just doesn't move me. I don't get it. And it's not because I don't get music, because I do. I get what they're doing. But I'm really blown away that they even played that crap on the radio, honestly. Wow. I don't get it. Like, it's just not... Like limelight? I, I just don't get how it got to where it is. Like, I guess I'm, I'm kind of saying this wrong. Like, they're incredible, but I don't like them. Sure. Absolutely. And I'm, I mean, I think they, they, they should be commended for the stuff that they're doing and to go as far as they did and, and to be, like, on the radio. I mean, there's nothing else like that on the radio. So in, in that respect, they're incredibly amazing, but it doesn't move me at all. I don't get it. Hmm. Now I'm going to shut up. <laughs> You've stunned us, Jason Herndon. Wow. All right, Dax, you're up, bro. Oh, you good. I'll have to think about this for a minute. Will, do you have Let's one? See. I got one. Oh, I love it. Love it. I love this question. Uh, of It's green sky bluegrass. I, uh, I, wow. I, they have never, I can't think of one time I've heard green sky play it. That's deep because all the, my friends that are into bluegrass, like, worship. So them. if you ever had a chance of going on tour with that band, that's <laughs> over now. <I'm, laughs> yeah, now it's over. <laughs> I know, but, uh, let me, like, they all rip, and they all, like, know bluegrass, and they're doing the jam grass thing, like, probably to the biggest extent that anybody is right now. With Billy They're Strings. selling out Red Rocks for, like, three nights in yeah, a row. Yeah, like, they're Billy big Str- right now. Billy Strings is right behind it, but I totally think Billy Strings is going to surpass them as far as... He's pretty the amazing. The height. But uh, I don't know. I just, they, I feel like they're always holding back a little bit. And like all the other, I feel like the other bluegrass bands, like each, even down to like the kitchen dwellers, they all just like are pushing it as hard as they can go. And I'm, maybe I'm, I'm biased on the mandolin, but I just don't think he rips on the mandolin. There so you're saying you can take him? I bet he knows a lot more than I know. But if I were him, there'd be parts where I wouldn't just be going like, picking notes out of a chord to set with a bunch of reverb and ambiance i would be like let's take this somewhere let's go even if it sounded like crap i would go for it and i don't think they do that well i like rush rush goes for it that's kind of sa- yeah that's kind of <laughs> the same you know, that's interesting two different genres and they both don't like them for the kind of the same reason well i mean i don't know uh, the I think uh, that the rush thing is those guys are so smart, and I'm I'm not I'm not ripping on them. Like they are, s- they're brilliant, brilliant at what they do, but there it lacks emotion to me. It, it doesn't move me. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. It seems real technical. Yeah, it's too technical. It's execution above soul. Like Toto's really technical, but. They have great songs, <laughs> and, and they and they make you they make you feel something. You know what I mean? Have you ever heard of Caninus? Mm-mm. You ever heard of Caninus? I haven't. Have you ever heard? Of Sounds them? like a terrible. They're a disease. death metal band, and their lead singer is a dog. <laughs> 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 have you heard of them? K nine. K Caninus. Caninus. It's ridiculous. I don't know what what made me think of that, but wow, I'm shocked at your answer. Who's your band, but Chris? Uh, y- it's not a band. It's an artist. You ready? Have um, you got yours? Yeah, I got one. Okay. You want me to do mine? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Drum roll, Hank. You got some timpani? There you go. Michael Jackson. Wow. <sighs> Audible gasp. I know. I hear it. <laughs> yeah. I just never got it. I don't get his appeal. I don't get the dancing. I don't get. I don't get any of it. I mean, from a very young age, because I was a kid when ki- when Thriller came out, or I was a kid when all of it came out, really. But like, I never got it. I always thought it sounded like a little kid or a little girl. So I just, <laughs> I don't know. It just, I did not get the mass appeal. I'm speechless. I know. I'm fairly indifferent to Michael Jackson. I mean, I just never I, got it. You know, if and you would have got worse, th- 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 the older he got and the more songs he released, it was just like. I mean, wow. If you would have said this before all the allegations towards I would, him, I did say I would it before re- then. I would respond, but I, I can't. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not siding with Michael Jackson today. I used to say it all I, the time. I worshipped him. I, mean, I thought it was the greatest. I know everybody did. I mean, what about the band? Like, let's say if you take him out of it in the band. Damn. I mean, the band on Off the Wall is the sickest band. 
Yeah. Like the and people I like playing the, the on band that stuff. On, it was oh, so the Thriller good. band is all great guys too. Yeah. Steve Luthaker. Uh, who else is on that one? Oh, Eddie's on it. Eddie does a solo. Yeah, it's got great. Uh, yeah, I'm. I just hit. But I it's see what, him. I, I can kind of. I can. It doesn't even matter that. who what the music. It used was. to bug me how much they, especially later on, they started burying his vocal in the mix, and that would that would drive me a little bit nuts too. But he's ran the gauntlet on. I mean, he's like the. This is a funny comparison, but he, you know, he does he does the Aussie thing. You know what I mean? Like Michael Jackson always has a bad ass guitar player. And I think that's what kept me interested. I want the best guitar player. Because <laughs> he had, I mean, he had, he had Jennifer Batten and I mean, Steve yeah, he always had, Sla- didn't Slash, Slash play with did him? Yeah, I mean, one. Eddie Van Halen, like Luke at the, I, th- I mean. I feel like that's just because he's, he's just the celebrity Michael Jackson. Yeah, because, I mean, we could hire those guys to play on our record if we had the money. If I was a if billionaire, we I, could have the, I could have Neil Peart on drums. Not exactly. on my record. <laughs> <laughs> Not on Mason's <laughs> record. <laughs> I just didn't. I just. It sounded. It didn't sound good to me. That's what I'm saying. Do you think Neil Peart could play uh, an ACDC song? I don't know. I doubt I, it. What's the Michael Jackson? Uh, that blank on the name. Annie, are you okay? Yeah. What's that song called? Hey, uh, smooth, smooth Criminal. criminal. The guitar tone <laughs> in that song <laughs> is <laughs> iconic. <laughs> I just I don't I, you know maybe I was sour to him early and just don't know why it's just he just the voice he just all the hee hee that stuff <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a huge James Brown fan like I love James Brown's probably in my top five of all time yeah yeah I mean he was a he was a man he was a soul man yeah you know what I mean and he could dance. He could just well, do you're, you're making me question my entire childhood because I'm like, well, how the hell did I like Michael Jackson I don't, so much? How I, don't, can, I like you so much, yeah. and you hate Michael Jackson, and I love Michael Jackson, and I'm doubting like the person that I am. I think <laughs> something's wrong with me. Do you guys Thanks, think he Chris. did it? What's that? Do you think Michael Jackson did the, the It's like Samuel L. Jackson in A Time to Kill. You damn right I did, <laughs> did and I'll that? do it again. <laughs> Did y'all watch the documentary? That it, I haven't. I haven't uh, seen it. I haven't have seen, seen it? it. I have not. I don't seen know. It. I've I watched mean, Dave Chappelle talk about it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, some. Th- I don't think any level-headed person can just look at everything that went on and said this guy. I mean, he obviously was not a normal guy. He didn't have a normal upbringing and all that. But I'm not. I'm just talking about the music. Okay. Just I didn't, wa- I didn't mean to Shanghai. Anything. No, 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 no. Just, just the music. I just. I mean, the thing is, like. That's the it's got to be somebody right. super successful. Well, like, I mean, I mean, the king of the pop. king of pop. You hate the, the king of pop. The self-anointed king of pop, by the way. He came up with that. <laughs> hey, man. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but just the, I just didn't get the, the, the dancing around on stage and grabbing the crotch. It just was, like, silly. It just seems like silliness. I feel you. No, I mean, I'm kind of agreeing with and you. Like, like you're making kinda, me hate him. He kind of start like... Every pop star has to have dancers now because of him. I mean, it's just like. But when you saw that Billie ugh. Jean video and you saw his footstep on the, in the light lit up, and I mean that blew my mind. Some of the moves are awesome. I wanted to take when my he pants moonwalked off in '82 <laughs> <laughs> in the, the lean thing. and the le- yeah. trickery, trickery. I just man, I just did not get it. I don't know why. I, thriller. You could not get away from th- Thriller in 84. What's your favorite Michael Jackson song? <laughs> <laughs> Probably Man in the Mirror or something. That's a know. good one, yeah. No, or wait a second. Let me think about this. Or the early, or that off-the-wall stuff, the disco-y stuff. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, Rock With You. Oh, yeah, maybe that. But, yeah, I just didn't get it. I, well, I want to get it. You know, it's like one of those things I'm, je- I, I, you know, what it turned me off to. But I can tell you, not liking him at an early age. Yeah, I had an older brother growing up, and he was into like Van Halen, ZZ Top. And he was probably cutting on my. Oh, he too, was going, cutting oh, on my. You can't listen to that. Right, he probably terrible. influenced it. And then the older I got, the more crazy crap came out about Michael Jackson. I was like, yeah, see, huh? I told you. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like. <laughs> I don't know. It just kept growing, and then I'm like, "Yeah, see, you all, you people were duped. <laughs> this guy's <is> crazy." 
Oh my goodness. Then I watched the Grammys when he, the, remember the Grammys where he took the monkey and Brooke Shields like and he started getting what? his skin started changing colors. He started getting real white. Uh, like yeah, he started I know. I said I wouldn't get off into that stuff. It was just about the music, but I don't know. That well, just, he definitely had some issues. The whole package. Yeah, he had some I hated issues. the music early on. I just hated it. I hated it. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of it had to do with like my brother and just like the, all the my neighborhood. We all just thought it was, I don't know, not macho. Well, that's you know? a pretty. I mean, he, if he was doing those things that he was accused of, it's a pretty big, heavy burden to carry around. So I don't think they'll ever trump his. He was so big. He was just. It's like one of those things. Yeah, he just he did he. So many people love him. But I don't think it'll ever. I don't know if it'll ever tarnish him completely. Right. Like Bill Cosby, right. he's going to be tarnished. But I think Michael Jackson was a global – he was like Elvis level, Beatles yeah, he'd level. He'd walk in a room and, and, you, and people would pass yeah, out yeah, yeah. because he, he, he was he 100 feet away from he had He he had something going on that was, was bigger than life, you know, obviously. And there's a lot of appeal there, but I don't know. That's my – I could – there's a lot of other people, like for the – Oh, this is a better question. Go ahead. Uh, no, you got to do yours. But before we do yours, like, there's all these other ones that I hated and now like, and then there's ones I liked and I now hate. Who'd you hate but now like? Billy yeah. Joel. Oh, really? Yeah. I, Billy Joel, I can't. And when I was growing up, I loved Elton John. I hate Elton John now for some reason. I don't know why. He's kind of become... Like Elton, like the Elton it's John I love is the Elton John that was on the Muppets. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It just he just seems silly to me. Well, he's just uh, kind of almost a character of and himself. And it's not even the Billy Joel. It was like uh, some of it's okay. I, I like a lot of the Billy Joel that none like hardcore Billy Joel people don't like. Like I like the stuff where he played guitar. Didn't he have a couple songs in the eighties where he played the guitar? Maybe so. so. Did you like? We didn't start the fire. Did you like that song? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. I like his older stuff for sure, but I I like that well, the one matter of trust. He would say you want that one. Yeah, I like that's a good that one. one. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into that later. Dax, you got. I'm dying to know what's your. Guilty this is a or not guilty pleasure, but you're super successful, but can't stand them. If we're sticking with like that world class. Yes. Echelon. Yeah, go ahead. Or whatever. Just your personal choice. It just you know, we've had a bluegrass, we've had prog rock. Or whatever you call that crap. Mine yeah. was pop. But yeah, go for it. Whatever. I would say you two for like my big one. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. And then like Black Bell Bride slash Andy Beersack for my small one. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, well, yeah. You got to elaborate on the U2 thing. The U2 thing, that's one of those ones I loved when I was like a teenager. I can't listen to two seconds of a U2 song I, now. I kind of get their hits, but anything that's not their hits sounds like the most generic, very dramatic, indie garage band rock. Very. Like, it's just so throwaway. Yeah. They yeah. have like three or four hits, and then the rest is all album filler. To I feel me. like you got to give Bono like most improved over time. Like, and, and I don't mean that in a good way. For I sure. mean like you listen to old stuff, and it's like he's terrible. Yeah. And then they you listen to it as it went on ten years later. It's like I can listen to him. Probably the he best, learned how to sing. The best guy in their band was their drummer, probably forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Their bass. The, Adam Clayton. <laughs> they yeah, were going to come out with an Adam Clayton signature model that had one string on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he never plays anything. Like right. That. Just the E string up and down the finger. Like to become a stadium selling, like, one they're of the global, huge, global one of the act of all world. time. Yeah, like, absolutely. Eh, they're yeah. okay. I agree. My, yeah. I was, my dad was super into U2 growing up. He always tried to get me into them. And, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> this league, like, but, I, and so, like, your next thing you're going to ask was, like, the, uh, Ones you hated, but now like. Ones you hated, so I never, I had to, f like, put on YouTube, like, you got to change it. Like, I, I just, I don't like you two. That's what I would say. And then they did Bonnaroo not too long ago, and I was, like, fully prepared to go to some late-night DJ set or something that was going on not during that set. But I went to the U2 set, and they blew me away. Really? Their live set wow. is freaking awesome. It That's sounds amazing. Story. They do everything right. They have this gigantic... When they're not doing it, they're set in the middle of the arena. They're doing a festival set. So I think when they tour now, they set up a stage like Metallica does. But um, they had the, the entire wall, if you've seen that Bonnery stage, the entire back of it was a gigantic screen. And it was like, from where I was standing, it looked like high def. So 
they were playing amazing. The, the stage looked awesome. It was an awesome show. Wow. Now they get a thumbs up. Did nice. the songs make sense in that setting? They played Joshua Tree, so it was a lot of hits. Uh, hey, Hank, do you have one? Yeah. Um, I don't think Metallic. I agree with you two, 100%. If you I, say Metallic, I'm jumping off the stage. I, I, <laughs> I'm going to say Metallic. Oh. I, I just. Really? I, I, I used, I used Exit to Exit Light? I used to run to Enter some of music in like middle school, and it was cool, and it it, uh, it was it was fine, but uh, it, ne- it didn't age with me. It never stuck with me. I didn't really get it. I'm a I like Megadeth. The first time I heard Megadeth, <laughs> I was Hell like, yeah. "This is badass." That kind of awesome. happens, I think. You pick Megadeth. one. It's like, like the Beatles or the Stones. Yeah. You kind of pick one. So you're Megadeth. more of a Megadeth kind of guy. Megadeth was dope. Metallica. It just um. Hey, this I don't, is I don't Lars. Lars, <laughs> <laughs> you should Lars not have said that, Hank. Me. I'm not gonna post this on YouTube. <laughs> Give me your money. Give me your money. <laughs> That's my song. But yeah, I I, I just um, it it never. I guess in in metal, I want fast and loud and. Riffage is cool, but it, I, I don't know what it is about Metallica. I get it just it. didn't didn't resonate with me. I get it. Didn't work. Who's your favorite punk rock band right now? Oh God. <laughs> I love uh, to talk to Hank about I punk rock. I think I like the Dead Kennedys a lot right now. They're still good, yeah. Gigi Allen and the Murder Junkies. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, a whole other episode. I think we got about an hour, so we're gonna we'll just cut. That's a good place to stop. I think. What about you? You think so, Hank? Yeah. You guys cool? Yeah. That was good. I like talking about. I could talk yeah. about that stuff forever, Absolutely. all day, all night. I got this. Made me think of a million other questions I wanted to ask too. Oh yeah. Who, uh, whose answer was the most shocking though? On, on the Jason. I think Rush. Jason's was what for sure. I've that. always felt that way. Yeah. I was. I would literally. My breath went. <gasps> Rush. And I see you play that lick all the time. Uh, like, it's just I think it's just therapy. It's therapy. I like the flip of that. Living in Nashville, I like the flip of that question even more. All the artists and friends and bands that should have made it but didn't. Yeah. yeah. Artists and friends who should have made it like big, like it just you know, within a week of moving here, that's one of the big uh, problems with moving here is you're immediately like you're just blown away by the level of talent of yeah. people that no one's ever heard of playing to like no one at the Rutledge on a Tuesday night. Like you see that every night when you first well, move I, here in the early days. I hear days. story after story about how, uh, and I'm not going to name names, but how people moved here to do one thing and ended up doing another. Sure. Uh, like top session guy, the guitar player. He moved here to be an artist. Yeah. And now he's just a guitar player that plays on all the artist stuff. Yeah. You know? Or a guy that moved here to be a guitar player. And you and all you gotta do is go out one night and realize where you where you where you're at on that. So sure. I and mean, then you, there's I mean, been for years me, years of humbling. All you got, like you said, all you gotta do is go out one night if you're a guitar player and think you're right. you're a badass. Right. <laughs> you <could laughs> uh, it took it took about 15 <laughs> it, minutes. Yeah, and then you, you're going. You're just in the wrong wow. town. That's just the, there's just all there is. To I mean, it's might like, be a, a songwriter. <laughs> it's kind I of. I think uh, I'm gonna go the songwriting route. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I mean, I think that happens, and, and I, I, I think it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it probably happens. To, it'd, it'd be kind of interesting to see if we had some kind of machine where people did never feel that way, and because yeah. a lot of people that I'd love to hear some of the people that that gave up that because they just because they heard that and they're like, oh, I don't. Well, how about people I, that I don't moved need to be away? Doing that. Of like, right. well, see, that's the process of weeding out. So if you if you right. if you're not resilient through that, you weren't going to be good at making it anyway. Yeah, it's a whole fear of failure thing. I mean, like, look at the guitar players for these bands we're talking about. And I don't want to rip on Kurt Hammock or <laughs> Hank no, does. I mean, but Kurt, he's not to me. He's not a very good guitar player. I'm sorry. He said it. There I we go. Uh, not Alex Lightson, he is. He's an incredible guitar player. He just doesn't move me. But in uh, like, Lars, he's a terrible drummer. He's terrible. Hi, yeah. This is Lars. But no offense. Uh, what him. are you <laughs> saying? But I mean, I'm just saying. Like, then you then you go and you went into this place and you said, well, hell, I can't be a guitar player. This guy's better than me. Well, that's where you mess up because it doesn't. Because apparently, matter. it doesn't matter. Clayton, bass player for you too. The, the talent has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Don't want to wait till you know me better. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
This was fun, guys. I've made no friends. So. We need to do a part two. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, are you going to come back and do it again? Yeah. Promise? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep us here all night talking about that stuff. I want to do more of a music business thing about all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll do some of that. Yeah. Well, you know. It's like you, are you traveling? You're, well, you're about to travel. Yeah, but I mean, I'll, I'll be back. S- all right. I'll be back Saturday. Will's got to go. So S- thanks, you, Will. Will. <laughs> I'll be back Saturday, and then I'm off until December 4th, okay. and then I'm off until February. Okay, cool. Well, well, we'll do it again. This was fun. And once we get this down, we're going to hopefully have it set up where we can do them maybe twice a week. It'd be cool if we started an Instagram or Facebook page and, and let people send us the questions. Absolutely. We're going to do all that. Yeah. We're going to do What do you that. want us to talk about? All right. You know? We're out. World Peace. Music Nashville live room. Come by, check it out. We got some great deals on some good new guitars. We got a great selection right now. Probably the best selection we've had since I've been here. Uh, check out the website, worldmusicnashville.com. All right, guys, thanks.